Welcome back guys to Pinar Casa with your boy Mark and Mark. And we're gonna go straight up to the games or the series that's already been finished and we're basically we're waiting for their next opponent. So let's do a little preview or a review and analysis of the matchups that have happened so far and it's been done. Let's go to the East first, the first team to advance to the second round of the playoffs. Let's look through the Miami Heat versus Sixers series. What have you, what do you notice about what did you, what did you see? What did you like? What were you surprised about? What were you disappointed about? Like spill it all out. Um, for Miami, uh, I thought by winning one game in Philly, they would be able to like you know uh, win more games. Mm -hmm. You know, especially Dwayne Wade uh, mm -hmm. showed his uh, old self back. But uh, yeah, the flashback. That's what it is. Yeah, the flashback, right? Unfortunately, that didn't happen, and yeah. um, you see this whole series just you know Ben Simmons and um, actually MB didn't even play earlier, but uh, Ben Simmons was just uh, manhandling uh, Miami this whole series. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, passing the ball, um, driving inside the lane, dunking. Uh, he's pretty much doing everything. He's like, for a rookie, he's almost averaging a triple double. Like, it's that's impressive. really impressive. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, you know. So sort of Magic LeBron, Johnson, like Magic like. Johnson, LeBron, yeah. you know, um, and then now when Embiid came, now you see the dominance now uh, between the two teams, mm -hmm. and the difference too is Philly's just much more younger, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Miami looks like they're old and tired, mm -hmm. and they're not utilizing um, uh, what's his name, Hassan Whiteside. Mm -hmm. uh, if they used him more, maybe they would have been able to counteract, you know, um, uh, Philly's. Um, Offensive power. I mean, they got three-point shooters. You got Ben Simmons passing the rock to like everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much it. I know if they use Hassan Whiteside efficiently, because they probably would have won a few more games. But I, I do believe the Sixers was gonna take it to the take on top against the Heat. Um, it's just sad that like Hassan Whiteside has been uh, not not struggling himself, but just like a little bit back and forth between his him himself and his coaches and the organization themselves mm -hmm. he's only played what six minutes that i think that whole game in game six game, game five yeah. um it's, it's very unfortunate that they haven't used him as much as he wants to and which he can do as an offensive player Kelly Olenek, our own canadian was playing very well in that series he played um, the majority of the, the center minutes mm -hmm. for them he was so, really amazing. He's yeah. just counter, counter, like they had to match up. I understand what they, what Eric Spolstra wanted to do, uh, fellow Filipino uh, <laughs> coach in the NBA. Yeah. I understand what he wanted to do is try to play small ball, counteract with what, um, what the Sixers were doing. But the Sixers, as what Fran said, younger, more faster, and even though they ha don't have that much experience, and this is the only first playoff series in a long time, especially with this, this group of young players. They look really good, and they're really hungry for that top spot. And they just, I guess, they really, really bounced off from that um, end of the regular season when they won, like, what, 16, 16 games in straight? And, and they continued it. And they continued it. And they, they also feed off the home crowd. The home mm -hmm. crowd is really, like, the, if, you go to, if you watch Philly games, I, I believe, like, there's, it's really, really hard to beat Philly in Philadelphia with the, the team itself. Um, will help the players that they have and also the crowd the crowd they feed off the crowd's energy mm -hmm. it, it, it's great like uh, the thing that I noticed really uh, with them is they're well coached mm -hmm. the uh, you know defensive minded coach it's hard to find a young team like that be well disciplined on the defensive end and Brett Brown has really done a great job for them and they listen to him and, and another thing too is that uh, the, the Sixers organization what they did this time around that really helped them a lot was that they surrounded their young core with uh, professional and veteran uh, leadership that, you know, like J.J. Redick, like a Marco Bellinelli, uh, and Nelson Eriosova, and, and, and Amir Johnson. These are professional basketball players that have playoff experience. So it helps with players like Joel Embiid, Covington, Dario Saric, um, Markel Fultz, and Ben Simmons to be surrounded with this kind of leadership. And it's good to see, you know, I doubted them in a split. Like, I was going to call it on the heat, but <laughs> my thing was Joel Embiid. If he came back, two or three games, I knew he, did, he was the difference maker and that really took it all, yeah. right? And it, it's great to see how far they can go. Everybody's now in favor of them. Like Stephen A. Smith jumped off the bandwagon, like six is gonna go to the finals, right? It, it's crazy how, you know, the process now is, it works. And people don't know, but Brett Brown's record when they were, when he was playing, when he was coaching them, maybe the, the you know, the first five years was he was 75 and 250. That's a really horrible You're record. Really but this year record. he was 53 and 20. Yeah. 
that's a big jump. They almost had the same amount of wins as they had the past three or four years. That's how combined, sad the combined, process yeah. has been. Yeah. But let's go to the, the uh, to one of the teams in the West. Then let's go to uh, the Warriors and well, no, let's go to the Houston and the Wolves because this one seemed like everybody knew that it was going to be a Houston win. What did you notice about the the whole series? Well, the Chicago Timberwolves, <laughs> as we like some of us like to call them, uh, it's very disappointing that they. I mean, it, no one's going to win against Houston. I, I didn't believe Minnesota was going to win against Houston, but <laughs> the fight wasn't really there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't believe what Tom Thibodeau was going to be a good coaching, um, a good coach in Minnesota, because he, like, rumors are allegedly he overplays his players. He gives us a lot of his starters a lot of minutes, a lot of logging minutes, and he's tired them out very, 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 very quickly. Um, it's, I, I think on paper, beginning of the season, this, this team looks so good on paper. NBA 2K, you play them, they're probably good as well. But when you see them on court, it, does, it doesn't look like they're clicking. The chemistry's not that much there. Um, it just, you have to choose between Jimmy Butler or Andrew Wiggins as your top shooting guard small forward. Um, mm-hmm. Carl Anthony Towns wasn't playing that well. He's, for some reason, he just wants to be a three-point shooter. Why, just go, go in the paint, man. Like, like what Shaq said, or Charles Barkley said, they, both of them said, you gotta, you gotta be dominant in the paint, ask for the ball. If you get doubled, pass it out. You have so many shooters, Jamal Crawford, Andrew Wiggins, Jimmy Butler, even Derrick Rose can give, give you that shot. It's just the, the usage or the, the IQ there is not, it's not there. It's, it's just not there. And Houston's a better team. Uh, James Harden and with that Mike D'Antoni uh, offensive style of coaching is very good. Yeah. Um. What I was thinking this whole time, um, Carl Anthony Towns should have like uh, stepped up since it's his first playoffs. Um, I expected more from him. Uh, I expected like a, at least a double double um, average. And Andrew Wiggins, he's saying he's unhappy uh, with his role, but um, if he's unhappy, you gotta show you know some um, hunger. And Derrick Rose, surprisingly, wow, he showed up for them. He's like. Yeah. Him and Jimmy Butler. I mean, it's it's hard them, to man. count him out because um, yeah. he's a Chicago Wolves. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he wants to show everybody that they still got it. Um, mm-hmm. Jimmy Butler, uh, too bad he got injured near the end of the season, so uh, maybe he wasn't nearby his you know full form. Mm-hmm. And um, who else? Uh, like Jair said, like just, they have so many shooters. Uh, it looks good on paper, and you would think that they would put up more of a fight. Then uh, they did this uh, the series. Mm-hmm. Was it? It was a what four one? Yeah. Yeah. This mm-hmm. I thought it would at least go to six games, seven games, but mm-hmm. no, too bad. Yeah. I guess in, in the end, I I feel like it's it's a learning experience for them. Mm-hmm. If you guys think about it, these are a young team, right? This is the first playoff game for Wiggins and Towns, and I think there's only uh, from here on then it's only gonna go you know up. And they're only going to get better because they're going to have going to have more time to spend together. Mm-hmm. This is their first season technically, with this you know expectation of making the playoffs. And now that they had a taste of it, I feel like this is a, a good experience for Towns as well to go through that to be you know to be the main focus defensively of a team. They like the Houston prepared for him. They didn't prepare for any like they they said that they're going to take the ball out of Towns. They're going to. Mm-hmm not let this guy shoot the whole series and let Jimmy and the rest of the other team basically beat them. And that's something that Towns is going to learn from here on then in terms of how he's supposed to be in terms of aggressiveness, in terms of dominance, in terms of taking care of the basketball and being the force down low. And because he has both inside and out, he's so skilled that he's just going to get better. 